Uh, Adam, four in a row, said you I'm guessing there's not a lot of change selection-wise for you this week, keeping it pretty stable. Yeah, I suppose the two we're looking at is, is Jeddah, who's back from suspension, and, and whether Hickey's going to be available or not is the, the, the two main conversations. It's pretty simple with Jeddah. Is the automatic conclusion with him? Or is yep. it, and why, why is he so important to what you do? Oh, well, he's been in, in our senior side since the day he got here, pretty much. So um, he got suspended. So there's, <laughs> I don't understand there's any discussion. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's more from a just. We know he's important. Oh, okay. Oh, it's pretty obvious, I suppose, for us. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's actually played back for probably twenty games of his career, uh, a bit over. So he's he's still trying to master his craft for a 30, 31 year old, and in that space. But we've been really pleased with his uh, progression over the last twelve months. And obviously, ball in hand is is really effective for us. But his ability to defend and work with the other defenders is something that doesn't happen overnight. So I thought throughout last year, he just grew in that role. And it's the stuff you don't see. So um, that's the same as this year. I think there's more there's more improvement in front of him for playing as a defender. It was a pretty um, bruising and physical in yeah, against Adelaide. Does that impact selection at all? Or come to your thinking this week? Oh, well, we're looking at it, yeah. Uh, it's an eight day break. So that it definitely if it was a six day break, um, we would have um, had to look at things a bit deeper. but. Yeah, I think it was 130 stoppages. We averaged 85, something like that. Um, we had over 100 tackles, which we probably haven't done for for a long time. Um, but yeah, I think what we've done in the last month is we've played a brand of football that is, probably stands up in the big tough games. So that's that's important we continue that anyway. Was that a deliberate shift or was it just a matter of how things evolved because of the way teams were playing against you? I think I might have mentioned about a month ago that we're just not winning the ball and we're not, um, it's hard to do anything outside of that. So we, we had a good focus of training of just ground balls and um, contest and balance, all those things. So that's, that hasn't really changed. It feels like we we're in a better space than we were four weeks ago. Our pressure's gone up. Um, but that doesn't mean success, it just, just gives you a chance. Yeah, Elio's had 12 tackles a game for a month. Well, that's he? pretty yeah. incredible. Well, is that just the basic edge of it? Is just getting there and tackling? Because these numbers went through the roof basically once you said that. Yeah, well, these guys, you know, they they recognise when we, we talk through some situations where we need to improve, they, they, they respond pretty well. So um, I'm not, I think all of our leaders have stood up in the last month and various stages of games where we've been inconsistent and we had to lean on some experience or some leadership, I think, and he's part of that group. There's probably seven or eight, even more players that understand what's required um, when it really matters. It's just trying to get that from the start. That's our challenge. I think the, the three midfielders, Yo, Redden and Shuey, all had 40 tackles between them, which is quite amazing. You did say you heaped a bit of pressure on the leaders of the club to stand up. They've responded in a perfect way. Yeah, I don't think it's, it hasn't been you need to get better or no, it's, it's probably more just the fact that, you know, we, we against, I think it was Geelong and uh, even Port Adelaide, we, the, the, the contest was, wasn't as good as we would have liked. So, you know, they had, had a really good focus of that and that's going to continue for the rest of the year. It has to, the way the game's played at the moment, the, the contest and a lot of one-on-ones around stoppages these days. There's not much avenue for, for you know, spares. So a bit of congestion. So just just making sure we're up up and about in that area. Vardy's game last weekend, career high hit outs. Have you seen a bit of a turning point? Oh yeah. Um, I think his ruck work. I know he got he had a um, he, he might have struggled a bit against Max Corn, and I don't think he would be alone in that space. So um, as a ruckman, he's it's once again it's his first year of carrying the ruck, which he's going to have some games where he's really competitive. He's going to have some games where he gets beaten. So. As long as he's given his given his all, then, then we're okay in playing his role. So we've got Hickey this week available, hopefully. So that's a, that's a discussion whether we play the two rucks or or the one. So that's that's up for for debate. Um, so we'll find out that this afternoon whether he's going to be available or not. Jared Cameron, you mentioned him last week. Four goals the weekend. Is he nudging towards the debut? Is it this? Is it this week or is he way a little longer? Yeah, we definitely came into discussion last week with perhaps the conditions being. Um, a bit wet and his ability to crumb and tackle and you know he's playing his role pretty well at, at, at Waffle Eagles but he's played 
five games. Um, he's probably averaging seven or eight possessions and he's kicked seven goals. So he's, and I think he might weigh 70, 71 kilos. <laughs> so he, he's still learning the craft, but he's doing some AFL things at, at, at Waffle and at training, which um, it tells us that there, there's going to be an opportunity for him uh, at some stage. So whether that's this week, next week, uh, this year, uh, we think he's um, he's not far off it. Just back on Vardy and Nicky, how have you assessed the the one rug plus Oscar plus help from others down the line? Yeah, that's been it's been a mixed bag. I mean, I, I don't think so. Last year we probably had a bit more uh, continuity with with the side, you know, with the roles we had for the players, and you know, when uh, when Nick went out of the side last year, we kept the two ruck strategy with with Lysett and Vardy. So um, we've mixed that up a little bit this year. So. I think for the most part we've been pretty competitive for, for guys who aren't really full-time ruckmen. Um, I know Hickey is, but the other boys are, are doing their best, and our numbers suggest that we're we're fighting okay. So um, yeah, I haven't got a full lock on what we should do. Hopefully, we get Nick back in probably two or three games. So um, that'll be a different combination again. What do we do with a guy who doesn't ruck more than seventy percent? So yeah, we're, we're probably not as consistent in that area in terms of what it looks like. This year, have you seen Petricelli's uh, like he was the, the club favourite <laughs> early on in the season with the speed? His last three weeks, have you been happy with his output? Uh, yeah, I suppose it's been. Um, you know, you don't see. He's, I think five against Port, and um, you know that was that was a great individual effort. But a lot of the stuff he's doing is a bit like what Liam Ryan's doing. I, I don't know if Liam kicked the goal last week, but what we saw behind goals and the vision we saw was we're really pleased so yeah it's dangerous to just judge those half forwards on uh, what you see on tv and the scoreboard um, presence that they have so making the most of their opportunity is really important and we want them to hit the scoreboard but their pressure and the way they run and support and outnumber that's that's the priority and um, he's doing that at the moment but you know we think he's got uplift but yeah that, that's probably where he's at and Daniel Venables, uh, a TBA, uh, where, yeah. where's he sitting? You've got some concerns about him? Oh, it's just it's just taken a while to, to and we're really cautious of where he's at. So um, he, he's, um, yeah, he's probably a couple more weeks before we start exploring what he does in terms of his return to play. So, um, yeah, it's not a major concern, but we're just kind of keeping an eye on him. It's, it was a big knock. He's a, he's a young man and, um, yeah, we want to give him a bit of time to get it right. And um, you mentioned it, so I better ask, you said a couple of weeks for Nick Nat. Have you decided <laughs> whether he's playing straight up Eagles or Waffle yet? No, no. He trained today and was good. So I think at this stage we get to the bye and then we just decide after that whether he has a week at the Eagles, Waffle Eagles or the seniors. So we, we won't make that call until probably the bye, but definitely after the bye. Adam, on Daniel, is the industry sort of almost in a self-regulatory way of moving towards stricter protocols where concussions are concerned? Um, oh, look, no, I think it's always been there. Yeah, I, I think the um, the fact is we're, we're a little bit more aware on game day of situations and we've got our eye on our players and the testing that we do on, throughout the game. Uh, that's probably elevated in the last three or four years. It, it obviously, um, when you get a number of concussions over a short span, it's that's probably a, a bigger concern than what it used to be. Um, but I think we've always been pretty cautious. It's a bit more public now. There seems to be a preparedness to sit blokes down for two, three, four weeks. Is there any concern that there might be a, a developing problem? Yeah, we look the way we operate. We just whatever the doctor tells us, we we listen to. So if he said to me today, "Oh, he's great. He's fine to go," then we play him so um, but at the moment I'm not getting that feedback from the docs so um, oh, yeah it's always been out of the players and out of the coaches hands so whether the doctors have been a little bit more cautious or not I doubt it I think they're pretty they're pretty up, up front from the beginning um, nearly mid-season but can I ask about some of those rule changes that were implemented particularly sure. the runners and the lack of them being out there and it's big change for coaches on game day how have you assessed that do you like it and would you like to see it tweaked or are you happy with that? Oh, I'd love to get the runner, twice a quarter I'd love to use the runners um, from a strategic point of view. Give us a minute to get them on and off and let us try and change the game. Quite often it's how do we score more. <laughs> that's, that's the conversations we're having in the box. And 
waiting for a goal to get kicked, um, to get organised and prepare. Oh, if a goal gets kicked, let's send, send out all these messages. It's difficult to do. You know, the goal gets kicked, what are we doing? And by the time you've worked it out, the runner's gone on and come off. So if we could get the runner for twice a quarter, just you know, one minute for twice a quarter, I think that would be great. We're getting quarters now where there's one goal kicked. And um, yeah, as much as we think the players can work it out and um, I just don't think it's a massive blight on the game to have the runners out there just for one minute. It would take off a couple of, I mean, cap it at four for the whole quarter for, if they like, but um, yeah, that's my opinion. And the balance of you up in the box and on the boundary? Yeah. Well, that's what we're all doing. We're trying to, how do we communicate to our players and get messages out and most effectively? And if you're up in the box, you've got to go through an extra two or three channels. So I think a lot of coaches are starting on the bench. Okay, what's the game doing? Do we need to make any adjustments? Get back up in the box. What's going on with the coaches? The bigger picture of the game. Go back to the, down the bench. So I, I think every coach has trialled something, which probably tells us there's a little bit of frustration across the board. Can I ask also about the Adam Goodstock? Have you had a chance to look at it yet? And if so, we... No, I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't seen it. No, I haven't really seen it yet. The Bulldogs, how, how have you seen their season? They started really <coughs> dropped away a touch. Oh, yeah, yes and no. I think their best has, has been excellent, you know, as good as anyone in the comp. You know, what they did to, to Richmond, um, a great example of what their best looks like. And a bit like us, their worst is vulnerable. So we've we're, we're, uh, probably got two teams who, who, if they play the best footy, it's going to be a hell of a fight. But if one of us is off a little bit, they'll get whacked. So I think it goes both ways with... Uh, where the, where the Bulldogs are at. They've, they've had some really impressive performances as well. What do you make of Aaron Norton, WA boys? Had a pretty good Yeah, he probably should come home. <laughs> 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 no, he's a good player. He's obviously young. A little bit, I think Oscar Allen and, um, and Aaron are quite good friends and they, they're similar in terms of the, the professionalism, the way they go about it. They seem to be beyond their years for, for experience. And we've got that with Oscar. We've thrown him forward and thrown, thrown him back and in the ruck and they just, they just eat it up. They, they love the game. and. Um, important players for both sides. Tim English is the other one, isn't he? Another West Coast. He should come home too. <laughs> uh, all WA boys are good. You have a matchup in mind for Aaron? <clears throat> I'd, dare, I'd, I'd say, I'd, yeah, we, we'd have to have a look at it. Yeah, um, we, we normally have matchups every week down back, but um, we also play the way we play as well. So there's always a balance. So who would? <laughs> what day? It's Thursday. Oh, give us. Let's get through match committee and how we're going to strategise. I'll tell you on Sunday. You already know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do. <laughs> the, the midfield battle, if the, their midfield is dangerous, isn't it, if it, if it gets up and running? Yeah, well, like I said earlier, their, their style of play and the way they go about it, it's, um, it's been pretty consistent what they want to do and when they get it going, it's, it's really hard to stop. So, I mean, we confronted a little bit of that with, with Melbourne a few weeks ago. When it clicks, it's... Um, it's very difficult to stop. So our mids have been in a pretty good space. They've been pretty competitive all year, pretty good balance. But this will be one of the bigger tests.